Okay, guys. Sorry about that. Started recording without recording. Sorry. Uh, okay, so we're here. Uh, two dash three part two. All of this stuff uses the same procedures. Today we're going to use new skills to help simplify our procedures of solving an equation. Now, what is the goal of of the equation, yes, sir? Isolate the variable. Very good. That's exactly correct. When I isolate the variable, I want to get that bad boy by itself. And then we are solving for x over 1. Very good. We're solving for positive x over 1. x in the numerator, positive. Now, the procedures, we've already gone through them, but you guys are going to tell me. So what's the first procedure, my brother? Complete all distributive property. Yes, sir. You've got to go ahead and complete any distributive property you want. You need to distribute first. What's step two? Step two, yes, sir. Combine like terms on both sides of the equation. Very good. Combine like terms on both sides of the equation. Uh, yes, sir. Now, step three, we're going to get all the variables together on one side. Yes, sir. Yeah, now we're in a two-step phase. So now you undo addition and subtraction. Fantastic. And last but not least, and now you just undo multiplication and or division. All that we've already seen, okay? We saw this uh, yesterday, and this is going to be the same procedure whenever you're dealing with multi-step equations. Now, solving equations involving fractions, okay? This is actually quite simple. We've already done this before. We've already done this. If you look back at the other videos when we were doing two-step equations, I taught you how to get rid of the denominator, didn't I? What was, the, what was the way we did that? You multiply by the LCD to both sides. Very good. So here, the most efficient way to solve multi-step equations involving fractions is to eliminate the denominators of all given fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the LCD, the least common denominator. Once complete, all fractions have been eliminated, and you can proceed to solve the equation with ease. Now, like I said, guys, if you're, if you're hustling, trying to get this written portion down, don't. I already told you that, and I see a bunch of you guys writing. That's why we have a video, and that's why I post a PDF. Pay attention to the procedure. Write down the actual math. Then you could go ahead and fill in the words later gentlemen would be my suggestion. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow exactly what this says. In order to get rid of this these denominator of 4 and 3, I need to multiply by the LCD. What is the LCD here? 12, yes sir. So I am going to multiply 12 over 1 to both sides. I'm not multiplying it to the denominator, I'm multiplying it to the numerator. Okay? And now, let's use distributive property, guys. Remember, this is what I'm doing in my head, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing in my head. I'm doing 12 over 1 times 3x over 4 minus, distribute, 12 over 1 times x over 3 equals 10 times 12, which is 120. Guys, what's 12 times 3? Divided by 4, that's how I do that in my head. Now, if you need to do this setup until you get really good at it, which I recommend and I suggest. I've been doing this for a long time. Do not expect to be as fast because it takes time, gentlemen. So do it the easy way. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 3x is 9x. You get the same answer. Minus. What's 12 times x? 12 times x. Divided by 3, 4x. 4x equals 120. No more fractions, guys. Bye-bye. 9x minus 4x is 5x. That equals 120. How do we solve for x here, gentlemen? Divide by 5. And x is going to equal 24. How did I get that? 5 on the outside, 120 on the inside. 5 goes into 10, 12 two times. And 5 goes into 20, 
four times. Does that make sense, guys? It's a lot easier than trying to find the sum of 3x over 4 minus x over 3, because then you got to find a common denominator, you got to add those up, and then you got to start solving from there. A lot of us don't do well with fractions. This is a way to eliminate the fraction difficulty. Okay, next. What is the common denominator here, gentlemen? Yes, sir. 20. So I'm going to multiply everything by 20 over 1. Now look, let's try to use our head here, guys. We're going to multiply 20 to 2x, right? Again, I could do the setup if you want, but let's see if we could start learning how to do things in our head. What's 20 times 2x? Divided by 5? 8. 8x. Done. Plus, 20 times 2 is? 40. Divided by 4 is? 10. And then 20 times 5 is? 100. Divided by 2 is? 50. Now, again, how did I get that? It's 20 over 1 times 2x over 5 plus 20 over 1 times two-fourths equals 5 over 2 times 20 over 1. Okay? 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 20 four times. 4 times 2x is 8x. Boom. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 2 is 10. Boom. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 20 10 times. 5 times 10 is 50. Boom. Does that make sense? Now, Let's solve this, guys. Subtract 10 to both sides. 8x equals 40 divided by 8. x equals 5. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Now would be the time to ask. Now would be the time to ask. Yes, sir. You could use it for solving any kind of equation, my brother. Yeah, for sure. If you want to get rid of the denominator, just multiply both sides by the LCD. Yes, sir, my brother. Yes, sir. Um, it really depends. The question was, which, e which is easier? The one where you set it up first or the one where you do it in your head? I'm doing the setup in my head, so I'm not trying to be rude, but... Ah, it depends. It depends on your skill level with multiplying and doing numbers in your head, guys. I would suggest strongly to set it up first until you get the hang of it. I've been doing this for a long time. Okay? Some of us are still having problems multiplying regular numbers. So let alone if we try to do all this in our head, it may confuse you. So I would suggest setting it up until you really get the rhythm. When you really got the rhythm down and you're getting them all right, then try to see, okay, can I save some time by doing it in my head? Thank you, son. That's a good question. <clears throat> um, well, okay, let's rephrase this. You can't do all of this in your head. It's impossible. You could go from this part to this part, but I strongly discourage it. In fact, let me go ahead and state this. No one's allowed to do it in their head. No one. Because what's going to happen now is people are going to say, but you said you could, and then you're going to do it wrong, and you're going to develop bad habits, and then who gets hurt in the end? You do. And I do not want that. So do not do it in your head. You're not allowed to do it in your head. You have to show me the work, period. Does that answer your question? Thank you, sir. When you get A's on every quiz and every test, then you can start doing it in your head. All right. Now. What's coming on there here? 18, not 9, 18. So you're going to multiply 18 over 1 to both sides. So this is, this one's just 2. That's easy. 18 times 1 over 9 is 2. And it's going to be distribute, distribute. So 5, 6 times 18 over 1 minus m over 3 times 18 over 1. 2 equals 6 goes into 6 one time, 6 goes into 18 three times, that's 15, minus 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 18 six times, so that's minus 6m, subtract 15 to both sides, 
negative 13 equals negative 6m. Divide by negative 6 to both sides. m equals 13 sixth, which equals 2 and 1 sixth. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Sir? Always, always, always simplify. Always change it to a mixed number unless the directions tell you something differently. But if they don't say anything, you always reduce and you always convert to a mixed number, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, now here. Here, technically, we should distribute the three-fifths, correct? But let's say I don't want to work with the three-fifths. What's, what, isn't, what's the relationship between the three-fifths and this parentheses? How do we cancel multiplication? But when you divide by three-fifths, what do you do? You multiply by the reciprocal. So check this out, guys. Instead of having to distribute and then find an LCD, make your life easy. Those cancel. I'm left with x minus 20 equals 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 9 three times, equals 15. Add my 20, and x equals 35. Pretty sick, right? Now, the long way, you would have had to do it like this. You are allowed to do it this way. You are. I highly recommend you do it the easy way, but you could have distributed. That's going to be 3 fifths x minus 3 times 20 is 60 divided by 5. That's 12. That was 9. Add the 12. 3 fifths x equals 21. Multiply by 5 thirds to both sides. Those cancel. x equals 7, so that's 35. Either way, you want to do all of this or just go from here to there? The first one is a lot easier, right? All right, my brothers. Now, I got a way for you to get rid of and eliminate decimals. Don't bother writing this down. We've only got like 10 minutes or so left. So you can write this down. You have to write it down or print it out at home. The most efficient way to solve multi-step equations involving decimals is to eliminate the decimal of all given values by multiplying both sides of the equations by the correct power of 10. In order to find the correct power of 10 to multiply by, simply look for the largest number of values to the right of the decimal point and multiply by the power of 10 which matches the number of values to the right of the decimal. Once complete, all decimals have been eliminated, and you can proceed to solve the equation with ease. Let me explain how simple this is. All the other classes were really happy with this. Okay. Note, please look at this in red. This guy right here. All right. Look at each value. So I've got a 3.5. How many decimals spot? How many decimals behind that? One. 0.02, 2. 1.24, 2. So what's the largest number of decimal places behind the decimal? 2. So I'm going to multiply by 100 because there's two decimal places that I have to move, right? How many zeros are there? 2, which is the same thing as 10 squared. So now, now it gets easy. You're going to multiply everything by 100. If you remember the trick that I told you, when you multiply by powers of 10, you move the decimal to the right for every zero there is. So how many zeros are here? So how many places to the right am I going to move each decimal? So 100 times 3.5 is 350 minus 100 times 0.02x, 2x equals 100 times 1.24. Tell me, ain't that a lot easier than doing the decimals? So now, subtract 350 to both sides, gentlemen. Please be careful here. A lot of people are still getting messed up with this part. I have opposite signs. When I have the opposite signs, I subtract as normal. So it's 350 minus 124. And yes, I keep the sign of large absolute value. So that's 6. That's 2. 
and that's 2. So negative 2x equals negative 226. Because yes, I subtract as normal, but then I got to keep the sign of the largest absolute value. There are more negatives than positives, so that's a negative. Now to solve for x, this is negative 2 times x, divide by negative 2 to both sides. x equals positive 113. Does that make sense to everybody? If you have questions, now is the time to ask, gentlemen. Okay? What if I give you this decimal equation? What am I going to multiply to both sides to get rid of these decimals? Yes, sir. A thousand. That's completely correct. Why a thousand? How many decimal places behind? How many here? How many here? What's the largest? Three, so I got to multiply by a thousand. Does that make sense, gentlemen? So what's a thousand times 1.025? 1 1,025 x. Perfect. What's 1,000 times 2,458? Remember that plus just goes down. Equals 7,583. Remember, whenever you're multiplying by powers of 10, simply move the decimal to the right as many places as there are zeros. So now this is Mickey Mouse. Subtract. And we'll pause for the announcements. Okay, sorry about that. Now let's continue. So I've got 1,025x equals, this is a 5, that's 13, that's 7, so that's 2. That's 1, and that's 5, divided by 1,025, and x is going to equal 5 on the money. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Have a great day.